Hi everybody, Rob Power here, and uh, today I want to just give a quick presentation as a sort of exemplar for a digital learning resources assignment that I have assigned to some of my graduate education students. For this example, this is uh, my presentation for assignment two. Uh, the second stage of the digital learning resources tool activity for the course. In the first stage, uh, I put together a sample paper uh, proposing a digital learning resource called the Game of Games. So uh, a copy of my paper is going to be shared with my post along with this presentation, along with a link to the final version of the Game of Games. Uh, I outlined in my uh, original paper the uh, the background for this presentation. So the topic is all about um, gamified learning, games-based learning approaches, the similarities and differences between them, and uh, the issues and challenges that teachers uh, need to make their students aware of if they're going to be using these kinds of approaches in teaching and learning. And the whole idea behind this digital learning resource is rather than just giving my students some of the curated resources that I had found about these topics, I'm going to turn their learning experience into a game itself, whereby they can work individually or in small groups. And as they uh, review the materials and answer questions, they can earn digital badges. Uh, there's a, a series of three or four digital badges. And if we're doing this as part of a breakout activity in a live class, then one of the teams can also be awarded the Game of Games Champion Badge uh, by uh, getting through all of the activities uh, the quickest and recording correct responses to all of the questions. So here's a look at the resource itself. I set it up using uh, Google Forms. And uh, there's a link that I'm going to share to this along with this presentation if you want to try this game out yourself. So I have space in here for all of the uh, group members to add in their names. If it's just a student doing it individually, then they can just add their name and click on next. And then I have a series of branching activities. So in the next section, they'd review this video that I found about gamification. They would answer a couple of questions. If they get the question right, they proceed to the next section. If they get the, correct, uh, the, uh, the questioning correct, then a uh, branching alternative pops up and it gives them some instant formative feedback, lets them know that the answer is incorrect and ask them if they would like to try the question again or to rewatch the video. So if they click on rewatch the video, it brings them right back to that and they go through the whole section again or they can just attempt the question again. Uh, likewise, for the rest of these questions here, you get to a certain point, it gives you some formative feedback, letting you know you've won the first badge. And then um, I'll get all the information about who's uh, completed all of the activities, and I can manually award the badges to them using the Badger platform. Work your way down through all of the activities, and at the end, you have completed it. And one of the teams is going to get the, uh, the um, Game of Games Championship badge. Now, the way that this works is that once there are some actual student responses, there aren't any now, but as a teacher, I can click on link to sheets. It'll open up a spreadsheet for me. It will show me all of the groups that have gone through, the group members' names that uh, they've entered, uh, and who has gotten each of the questions correct. And it will have a timestamp in there. So it's easy for me to then see which group of students uh, got through the quickest, and recorded their final answer first, and then they would get the Game of Games Championship badge. Now, some of the, uh, the issues and concerns that uh, I had to look at when designing this activity, well, I had to make sure that it was accessible to everyone. I chose to use uh, Google Forms because it's a fairly easy platform to, uh, to create this type of activity in very minimal coding skills or technical skills needed on the part of the teacher. It's easy for me to share this by a link with my students. I just need to click on send and I can get the link here, shorten that, I can share this with them. 
I've also set up a QR code linked to this so they could scan it on their phone and, and quickly and easily access this during class. Uh, you could also get the embed code and you could embed this right into uh, Google Classroom or into Moodle or Canvas or D2L or any learning management system or a course web page. So it's very easy to share this with your students. That way, even if they're not there for your live class, they can uh, participate uh, by using this as a review activity and you'll still get their responses. You can use their responses as uh, summative feedback information while they get that instant formative feedback as they're proceeding through this. In terms of digital accessibility compliance, well, uh, the uh, Google uh, Apps for Education, the Google Workspace uh, applications are fairly robust in terms of their compliance with WCAG 2.3 digital accessibility requirements. All of these resources are compatible with screen reader applications. It's easy as an instructor for me to choose color schemes that, that won't cause issues for anyone with visual acuity um, problems. So the biggest thing that I need to worry about in terms of digital accessibility is with the curated resources that I've provided. So in this, I have two YouTube-based videos. I have gone and made sure that they all have closed captions before I embedded them and shared them. And I have a blog post embedded and that is also uh, compliant with digital accessibility requirements. Uh, it's screen reader compatible, it's open access. So there's no paywalls, no issues with copyright or privacy because I haven't made copies of any of these resources. I've simply linked to them. So I'm fairly good to go with all of that. Uh, the biggest concern now is going to be with uh, FIPA regulations, Freedom of Information and Privacy Protection Act, depending on your jurisdiction. So where I am living in Nova Scotia, if I am a K-12 teacher, I can't use this copy of uh, the Game of Games with my K-12 students because it's on my private account and the responses are gonna be collected. They're gonna be stored on internationally based servers but I could easily use my school board provided uh, Google Apps for Education account, use Google Forms and set up this activity there. All the data is gonna be stored on locally controlled servers, so we're gonna be fully compliant with privacy protection regulations for our students.